everybody. Welcome back to Simple Art for Adults. My name's Erin and today we are doing a complete review of these pencils. We have the Black Widow colored pencils and the Black Widow Scorpion colored pencils. If you guys have seen these on Amazon and you've wondered about them, these are two completely different sets. The original Black Widow colored pencils in the black box are the company's flagship pencil. These were the first ones that they released. Um, these have been around for a little while. And then um, a little later, they released this uh, set of colored pencils with the Scorpion on the front. Uh, hence, they're called the Scorpion pencils, but they are still in the Black Widow line. These pencils are all made by a company called MediHealth One. Um, and what started out as a, like a medical supplies company um, is now branched out into adult coloring after realizing the therapeutic benefits that it has uh, to the people who enjoy it for a hobby. Um, and so what they've done is they've tried to create some sets of pencils that are user friendly. Uh, they are nice and soft wax based pencils. So if you have arthritis, problems with your hands, anything like that, uh, these pencils are designed to make it easier for you to color your favorite images because you don't have to apply very much pressure whatsoever to get really good color. Um, now, uh, the original ones do come only in this little cardboard box. Um, the second set, which is the Scorpion set, does come in this nice little tin. Um, the lid does come off all the way. There's a piece of tape that holds mine on. Um, of course, mine are no longer in the tin. Um, you get the color names on the back of the Scorpion tin, which is a nice, always a nice little addition. My Black Widow and Scorpion colored pencils are all swatched out here. Um, what I've done is I've put the two sets together and put them in a color order that I like. The ones that have the little blue numbers up here are the ones in the Scorpion set and the ones with the color names. And then the ones with just a one, two, three, four, those are the original um, Black Widow pencils. I mean, I'll show you what I've done while we discuss these pencils just a little bit. This is my Hermit Shell uh, pencil case. And it's a hard case that has um, slots in it for you to hold a whole bunch of pencils. So what I've done in this case is I've taken the, um, the, the original Black Widow pencils because they don't have any color names or numbers or any identifying marks on them whatsoever. Um, and I've actually just wrapped a piece of masking tape around the tip of it and written a color number on it that suits my swatch chart. Uh, so now, whenever I need a pencil, I can look at my swatch chart and find the pencil. So we have the ones with the color names. If they actually have color names, those names are showing. And if they don't have color names, then they have numbers written at the top so I can find them. Um, the ones with the Black Widows, that's one of the biggest cons that I actually found with these pencils, is that there are no color names, there are no identifying numbers, and the barrel is completely black. Uh, so the only way that you're going to know what pencil you're going to get, or if you just use them out of the box, is to look at the tip of the core, because that's the only place where the color shows. Um, even the ends, oh, that's the wrong one. The ends of the Black Widows are capped, or the Scorpions are capped. The ends of the Black Widows are not, so you can also look um, inside the pencil to see um, what color you have in your hand. These are rather affordable pencils. They're about $15 a set on Amazon, so you can get all four gate pencils for under $30. So it's a really great buy um, for the quality of the core that you're going to get. So what I want to do today is um, the first thing is go through and um, look at some of the different colors. We're going to put these to the test. I've made a little worksheet here so we can look at it and see what the pencils will do. Um, once again, this is your full line of colors that you're going to get in the Black Widow and Scorpion set. It's a nice line of colors. Um, you get plenty of yellows. What I really like about the set is that you do also get some nice colors for skin. Uh, and these range from the very light. You can have like a yellowy uh, skin tone with a honeycomb. Or you can have a Caucasian skin tone with um, both of these colors here. Um, when you get down to this way, you can start with your nice darker skin tones, your caramel colors. Um, and then there are even some nice darker browns as well that you could use for shadowing. Alright, so with all that in mind, let me move this out of the way. I'm going to need that to see where my colors are. Um, I've made this little worksheet here. And this is basically going to allow us to test out all the things that are important to colorists. Um, when they are buying colored pencils. So the first thing I want to do is test the layering and we're going to try with red and yellow. So I'm going to use my swatch chart that I've made and we're going to use blood red because that is the closest to um, 
two or true red is the blood red and then I'm gonna use um, I think the number three from the original Black Widow set so we have one scorpion pencil and one Black Widow pencil the cores the quality of the core is exactly the same the only difference is the colors that come in the set so um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take my yellow and I'm going to put down just a really light layer of color. And what should happen when we layer these pencils is we should get something similar to an orange. Um, the blood red is the closest to um, a true red that we're going to find in the sets, in both sets. Um, I found that it does have a little bit of a pinkish tinge to it. So it's not going to be a really true red, and I'll get into that just a little bit later. But we should, nevertheless, get um, a recognizable orange when we're finished. And what I'm doing is just like I would do in a coloring book if I were trying to make a color that wasn't in one of my sets. I'm using light layers and just going back and forth. And then once I feel as if I'm getting close to the color that I want and um, my paper is saturated with the wax, I will burnish with a lighter color and try to mix the colors together. And so far so good, that is turning into a rather nice um, orange color. So uh, that is impressive. They do layer very well. It is continuing to allow me to add more layers. And this is um, just a normal paper. I think it's just a piece of sketchbook paper that came in my Scrawler Box subscription this month. Um, I very rarely use them for anything else, so I figured we'd use it for this test. It's moderately toothy. Um, it's, um, I don't know, it's thinner than cardstock. I would compare it maybe to a Strathmore's drawing paper if you have ever used that. All right, so now I'm gonna take a harder pressure and I'm gonna go in and try to push these colors together. And we did get orange. So I can officially say that these pencils layer beautifully. That's a very nice color. All right, so next up on the list of things we want to test is our blending. And what I'm gonna do is try to create a gradient that goes from green to blue to purple. Um, once again, I'm gonna refer to my swatch chart and try to pick some colors that um, will work well together. Um, I think what I want to do is, let's see. We will start with, I think, Grub Green. We're going to pick bright colors. Actually, let's do lighter colors. Let's do 22, 16, and 11. And those are all from the Black Widow set. I'm pulling them out. All right, so we have a green, a blue, and a purple, and they're all pretty bright colors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at the side of the paper, and with a very light pressure, I'm just gonna start with the green. I'm gonna bring it out about a third, almost halfway. And then I'm gonna take my blue, and I'm gonna start, I'm gonna overlap that green just a little bit. And I'm gonna pull that out so about two thirds of the way down, just a little more maybe, three quarters. And then I'm gonna take my purple. And I'm gonna bring that down as well, just so I have my colors placed properly. Then I get, I'm gonna do everything one more time. Still using light pressure. I'm gonna add some green. And with a lighter pressure, I'm going to add some more blue. And then I'm going to go back in with purple. Now to get the best possible blend, what you would want to do in this case, of course, is to continue to use light layers until your uh, paper has been saturated or until you're pleased with the result. Um, in this case, I'm trying to keep it relatively short, so I am not going to add as many layers as I can. I'm just going to gradually start increasing my pressure. And then the purple. Okay. 
that's not a bad blend. Not at all. It transitions nicely from one color to the next, um, which is very important to colorists, especially when you're trying to create pretty gradients or, um, you know, emphasize a light source, something to that effect. It actually does blend very, very, very well um, and easily, too. I, I'm not having to put in a bunch of effort to get these colors to blend. So as you can see, and of course there is like a little bit of a line between the colors here, and that's just because we've chosen colors that are, you know, very different from each other. But for the most part, we do have a nice seamless blend. One color lays over the other very, very nicely, um, and it does transition quite well. So I am actually pretty pleased with that. I could probably smooth this blend out a little um, just by going back over it with the other colors and trying to diminish that line between the colors as much as possible. Um, just like that. All right, so the next thing that we want to try is erasing. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my blue pencil, the one I just used here, and I'm gonna put a light layer of color here, and I'm not going for a masterpiece, I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way, and I'm gonna put a heavy layer of pressure here, heavy layer of color. And then I'm gonna get my electric eraser, my uh, oh hoo hoo battery operated eraser. And I'm just gonna do a streak across the center and see how well they erase. The light pressure erases almost completely. I know that you guys can hardly see that, but it does erase almost completely. With heavy pressure, it lifts some of the color, but obviously not all of the color. So we do still have some left, but it erases well enough that you could create a highlight with your eraser if you chose to do so. The next test, we're going to take a look at the black value and see how black the black truly is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down one light layer and we're going to see how black it looks. And of course at this point, like most blacks, it does look gray more than black. It looks like more of a charcoal color. So I'm going to turn the paper and I'm going to go back the opposite direction. It is darkening it up very nicely. So um, it does appear we may have something very close to black. And now I'm going to go in as hard as I can without breaking the pencil, obviously. And fill, this fill the black square in and compare it to the black space on my color wheel to check the black value. Now on your color wheel, if you have one, you're gonna notice um, over here you have your grayscale and your black. Now value number one is 100% black and value number five and beyond are all gray. So if I slip this piece of paper up under the color wheel and I compare it to the colors I have here, what we're gonna find is that we have a color that is in between value one and value two. And I'm not sure if you all can see that very well. Let me see if I can move this light. So it's not quite black black, but it's definitely darker than value two. So we have something between values one and two, and for an inexpensive set of pencils, that's a pretty darn good black. Of course, got a little bit of smudge happening, and these do smudge just slightly, so you wanna make sure that you're careful about that. I also like to test the opacity of the white and how well it's going to layer on over top of other colors. So um, for that, basically what I do is I go back with another light layer of the black, And then again, I'm going to turn my paper and go in another direction. Now, to be fair, when I put this down on my page, um, it didn't look 100% white. It appeared to be more of an off-white, but it is the closest thing to white that we're going to get in the set. So we are going to test it out. So this is our white pencil, and it's number one. That's the number I've assigned to it. And I'm just going to go down the center and try to apply some color. Now, unfortunately, we are not actually getting any white on the page. I don't have any uh, toned paper handy to try it on that to see what it looks like. Um, however, you can tell that it is going to do a good job of helping you blend out colors. So if you wanted to add like a milky effect and you really wanted to, um, to blend something and have it look like that, then the white pencil will serve you well for that. These do have quite a bit of wax and pigment in them, so it does make it easy for you to blend them out. 
So just to recap, I would give the layering probably an 8 out of 10. These pencils layer very, very well, um, and I could have kept layering you know, many, many more layers had I not burnished. Um, and we did put our red and yellow together and get a pretty orange, so I can say for certain that these pencils layer very well. As far as blending is concerned, we have to take into consideration that I did this fairly quickly. Um, I didn't put as much effort into it as I would if this were going to be um, a finished piece that I was going to frame. I would also give blending at least an 8 out of 10. These pencils did a fantastic job. Um, it didn't take much effort at all to get this pretty blend, and as you can see, while there are some lines between the colors, um, I do have to expect that a little bit, mostly because these are completely different colors. They are all very, very bright, and trying to get a complete 100% seamless blend with those three colors would have been very difficult with any pencil. As far as erasing goes, if you're using light layers and you make a mistake and go outside the lines, it's going to be really easy for you to erase your mistake and take care of that. If you've used heavy pressure, on the other hand, um, it is going to be difficult for you to lift all of that color. That's another reason why when you're coloring, it's always best to use light layers. This way, should you make a mistake, you can easily go in and take care of it. The black value, I'm going to rate it an 8 out of 10 again. It's not 100% black, but it is very, very close. And for a budget pencil, that's a really good black. The white opacity, based on this test, I did expect to see a, some more white go down than what I saw. Um, so I'm going to give this about a 5 out of 10 because it is going to serve well for blending. Um, this, may, this I may update later once I do have access to some toned paper and I try it on the toned paper. If it does appear more, uh, more opaque on that paper, I will put the information in the description box uh, just to let you guys know what my findings were. All right, the next thing I want to discuss is some of my favorite colors that came in this set that you're not going to find a whole lot in other sets. Um, by far, and you guys who know me and who spend time on my channel know that purple is my favorite color. And there are two in this set that I think are just gorgeous. And one is this pastel purple, which is truly pastel. And it's just the slightest little hint of pink. And I really, really do enjoy it. The next color I really liked was the deep purple, which is reminiscent of the dark or black raspberry color out of the Prismacolor set, but just a hint lighter. So I think it's going to be far more versatile in your coloring, and I do like that color a lot as well. There's also a color called Brown Bug, and while it does appear to be brown when you put it on the paper, it's almost burgundy. It's got this reddish tint to it that reminds me of like an Indian red or even a nice brick red. So if you were to color bricks or uh, things like that, this would be a fantastic color. As you can see, it's not truly brown. It does have that red to it, and it's a, I really enjoy it. It's going to be one of my favorites in these sets. Then we have Honeycomb, which is almost a flesh tone. It's like a cross between a yellow and a light flesh tone. Um, I think it's going to come in fantastic for doing Caucasian skin tones, um, and maybe it'll serve well. It, it'll serve well for um, like the more olive, the yellowy olive skin tones as well as an under layer. And then there's tan. If I can find it, that's going to be over here somewhere. There it is. It's toward the front of the set. Tanned. Again, it's a nice light flesh color. Um, and the reason why I pulled both of these out is that whenever I don't do a whole lot of skin, but a lot of sets do put a lot of focus on the, um, on their brown. So your darker skin tones, no matter what set of pencils you have, you can usually find um, some colors that are going to allow you to get the dark skin tone that you're looking for. Um, a lot of the smaller budget sets don't come with Caucasian skin tone colors, or if they do, they only come with one, and it's kind of off and doesn't really look right. In this set, and this is only in the Scorpion set, you get two, and they will play very nicely together should you choose to layer and blend them, um, and then you have some other darker colors that you can use for your shadows. Finally, another color that I really, really liked was Grub Green, and it's this beautiful emerald color. It's nice and bright and vibrant. 
um, and I do find myself reaching for these colors quite often, much like the emerald green and the polychromo set. It's one of my go-to pencils. So these are my favorite colors from the set, and some that I thought you all would really truly like to see. Now there are a few things that I wanted to discuss about these two sets, and though they were designed to complement one another, and none of the two colors are exactly the same, there are some that are pretty similar. Um, so of these, we have the brown bug and the burgundy, which are right beside each other, and you can tell there is a very subtle difference between the two. The burgundy has like a hint more red and purple to it than the brown bug does. Regardless, they are very, very similar. Then we have the green grass and the uh, number 21 green. These, when I put them on uh, the other paper, they looked a lot more similar than they do here. So I'm going to take that one back. I had it listed as being very similar, but once I look at them on this paper, they're not very similar at all. They are two completely different colors of green. The two that I was most concerned with and the two that I'm sure you've probably already noticed at this point are Galaxy Blue and then the number 17 from the uh, Scorpion set. Um, the 17 is just slightly cooler, but you really, really, really have to stare at it to see that it's cooler. It's really hard to tell the difference between these two colors. So out of the 48 colors, the two sets of 24, there are two groups of colors that are so very similar to each other that I feel like we would have been better served getting a different color instead of those two that were so very close in, in, uh, in tone. Um, so just to go over everything here, what I'm going to do here in a minute is I've pulled a page from Jade Summer's uh, Unicorn coloring book that just came out recently and I figured we would do just a little bit of coloring and I'll talk to you guys about the pencil some while I work on this uh, pretty little image here. But I do want to go ahead and while I'm getting started with my lightest color um, on the background here, which I'm going to use a color called Blue Heaven for that. It's a very pretty light blue. And while I'm doing that, I do just want to talk to you guys about the pros and the cons of these pencils if you're thinking about buying them. What do I think about them and uh, do I think they are worth your money? Um, the cons. We'll start with the cons so that we can end the video on a positive note. The cons of these pencils is that the flagship pencils, the Black Widow pencils that come in the cardboard box, don't have any identifying marks whatsoever. There are no color names, there are no color numbers, um, and there's not even a coat of lacquer on the outside of the pencil to give you any kind of indication as to what pencil you are about to use. So the only way that you can really tell um, what pencil you're pulling out of your set and you're about to put on the paper is to either swatch it on a piece of paper before you uh, get started or you can do like I've done and take a piece of masking tape, wrap it around the outside of the pencil at the very tip and put the number there and just number them yourself. And I found that that has been working for me pretty well. I've been able to find the colors I needed during this review without much problem. So I won't complain too much. It is a rather easy resolution albeit slightly tedious to have to do it yourself. But then again, for the quality of the pencils, I think that taking the 15 minutes to put the tape on and write the numbers, it was well worth it. And that's just my opinion. Um, like we just discussed, some of the colors in the sets are very similar. They're designed to complement one another, and for the most part, they do. Um, but as you saw with the burgundy and the brown bug, and then the galaxy blue and the pencil from the Black Widow set without the color name, um, some of the colors are a little bit too similar for my liking, and I feel like with such a limited selection of pencils, and you know, of course, in today's day and age for colorists, a set of 48 is a limited selection. Um, and I feel like with having that limited selection, we would have been better served with having some different colors in place of those, at least those four. Um, however, I'm sure that they will get used and they will get just as much love as the other pencils will. Um, another complaint that I have about these pencils, and it's not really, I can't really complain about it because it's true of most budget pencils, but you can't buy these open stock, at least not yet. Um, I have asked the manufacturers over at MediHealth One whether or not this is something they plan to do in the future. Um, I have not received a response yet. Um, they do have excellent customer service, guys. I've been in contact with um, the guys who run MediHealth One for weeks now, uh, planning this review and everything like that. So. Um, their customer service is amazing. I'm in the United States and they're in the United Kingdom. And so our 
clocks, our times are way different, and I only remembered to ask them this morning if open stock was something that they were planning to do. So it isn't for their lack of response, guys. It's for my forgetfulness to ask well in advance of this review. So what I'm going to end up doing um, is once I hear back from the, the owners of MediHealth One, and I've been working almost exclusively with Albert. He's such a, a, such a nice guy um, and really, really cares about his products. When I hear back, I'll update the description box of this video with that information so that you guys will know um, whether or not OpenStock is being planned or, or not. Um, honestly, I'm going to say I doubt that it's something they will do. I believe it costs companies more to sell their pencils in open stock um, for whatever reason. Um, and so uh, something that a lot of the budget pencil manufacturers don't really do, unfortunately. However, these pencil sets are $15 a piece, roughly. Um, you get 24 pencils in each set. So it's not too expensive to buy a replacement set once you have a couple colors that have gone missing. Um, it's just not ideal for everyone, I do understand. Now I'm sure you guys can tell I've got pencil strokes showing here, and that's no big deal, not with my first layer, um, because I'm going to end up covering them back up anyway. So this is just to get the base color down. So I'm doing the lightest blue there in the center. Um, another con is that there's no true red. And that was probably my biggest gripe about this entire range of pencils. Um, Blood Red is the reddest pencil that we have in here. And my dogs are making all kinds of noise. I apologize. So Blood Red is the reddest pencil we have. And if we take that and compare it to the red on the color wheel, which is a true red, it's pretty easy to see that the Blood Red has a very pink tinge to it. It's not really um, a, a true bright red color. And, but it is the closest that we're going to get. So it will need to just kind of serve our purpose. As you can see where I started putting lighter pressure up here toward the top, it really shows how pink it truly is. So as of right now, we don't have a true red. Um, Albert has told me that there is another set of pencils made by MediHealth One coming out soon. So hopefully that set of pencils will have a true red and we'll just have to see what happens there. That's really all the complaints that I have about these sets of pencils. I think they're wonderful. Um, they just go down so, so smoothly. They layer so beautifully, and this is a smooth cardstock, and they're still just layering so wonderfully. Um, so I'm going back over now with a darker blue and kind of pulling it out toward the center. We're just testing the layering here as I go. And these pictures in this coloring book are just gorgeous. I got the PDF copy so I can print as many as I'd like. I'm just loving it. It's so pretty. Now that we've discussed the cons of the Black Widow and Scorpion pencils, I figured we'd take a look at the pros, the things that I love about them and that um, make me continue to reach for them even though I own so many sets of pencils. Um, I have the Polychromos and the Prismacolors and the Lyra Polycolors and the, you know, I have so many pencils, but I do keep reaching for these no matter, no matter, even though they're considered budget pencils. Um, the number one thing that I like about these pencils is that they have incredibly soft cores. Guys, I'm not putting any pressure on this paper, hardly at all. And this is a smooth cardstock. This is not the, the normal vellum surface that I put my colored pencils on. This is a smooth cardstock. And to be completely honest with you, I printed this picture on this paper completely by mistake. I would normally use a much toothier paper when I'm doing colored pencils. And this is a paper I'd normally choose when I color with markers. However, despite that, these colors are so, so soft and smooth that they're going down just like butter. Um, and they are layering, even on this smooth paper, very, very well. I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed with it. Another thing I enjoy about these pencils is the vibrancy of the colors. The colors are incredibly bright. I mean, you get a really good range. Even though the black isn't quite black, and even though you're not going to get a 100% completely true red, the colors that you do get are 100% worth the money. If you have even the smallest set of Prismacolor Premier pencils, or even some a student grade pencil like the Scholars, you're going to be able to pull a red that will work with these pencils. All you need is another red color that um, is a true red. You can just use it alongside these pencils and it'll work just fine. So is it kind of bad that we don't have a red? Yeah, a little bit. It is kind of frustrating that there's not a, red, a true, true red in the set. Um, but, you know, 
it's not a make it's not gonna break the whole deal for me so it doesn't really make that much difference to me I would still buy these pencils again um, another thing is that the pencils are very easy to use um, I know a lot of people who turn to adult coloring do so to help take their minds off pain and in a lot of cases that pain stems from something like arthritis I have arthritis in my hands and uh, fibromyalgia and things of that nature so when you're using a pencil that um, is difficult to get the color on the page it can turn out being more frustrating than therapeutic for you and I do completely understand that because it's happened to me as well these pencils were designed to be easy for you to use they were made by a company that specializes in medical uh, supplies and whatnot um, and their entire goal is to help you with your well-being and your happiness and your health uh, you know both your mental and your physical health so these pencils were designed with ease of use in mind and it really shows um, like I said this is like zero pressure and this color is just coming down beautifully I'm really impressed with the way that they color Another thing I noticed about these two sets of pencils, what the first few times that I use them, is that they do come in triplets. When I say that, what I mean is that when you first start blending your colors together, uh, one of the most common methods that you'll learn um, on ColorTube, here on YouTube, and when you read blogs and you ask for advice in coloring groups, is the, is the, the rule of threes. And basically this just means you'll take a light color, a medium color, and a dark color and blend them together to create a gradient. And this is going to allow you to get your highlights and your shadows in place. A lot of sets of pencils don't take this into consider don't take this into consideration when they're manufacturing their pencils or when they're coming up with their uh, color selections. With these pencils from Medi Health One, the Black Widow and the Scorpion pencils, you get lots of triplets. And this basically just means it's easy to find a light a light, a medium, and a dark, so that you can do your blending. They're just all right there in front of you. And they're, every color in the box you can find a light and a, and a dark for. So, um, you know, that's definitely a bonus for me. It makes my hunting for colors so much easier. I feel like I don't spend nearly as much time trying to find colors, and I spend more time actually coloring, which is always, always a huge benefit. Um, Another thing that I like about these pencils is that the sets do, for the most part, anyway, they do complement each other and none of the colors are the same. There are some that are almost exactly the same. Um, one in particular, which is the Galaxy Blue that is very, very much like the dark blue that's already in the Black Widow set. Um, but again, for the price, this is easily overlooked. It's not a deal breaker for me. I really, really do enjoy using these pencils. And I'm thinking that um, as I get into using them more and on different types of paper, that the differences between those two, those two colors in particular may become more evident to me. It may just be because I chose these two different types of paper for today. I'm really going to notice the difference more than I do now. And that's something that I will be testing in the future. Finally, the biggest thing when it comes to the, um, the Black Widow and the Scorpion pencils and what really draws me to them is how affordable they are. They are not the most inexpensive pencils on Amazon and that's 100% true. They are certainly not as inexpensive as the sets of 160, 168 that you can buy for $20. And that's just the honest to goodness truth. However, these pencils are much higher quality in my opinion. Um, there are some of those budget sets that you can buy at Amazon that I don't own. For instance, I don't own the Hero pencils. Um, I do, however, have the Shuttle Art pencils, which are advertised as being wax pencils. So it is fair to compare these to those Shuttle Art pencils. Um, the Shuttle Art pencils are more affordable. They're about $25 for a full set of $160. However, the colors are very, very chalky. The tips snap off easily when you sharpen them too much. Um, and they do tend to smear quite a bit and that's just due to that chalkiness now while these pencils do also exhibit some chalkiness it's not anything like those um, and these blend so so much better than a shuttle art pencils not that the shuttle art pencils are bad please don't get me wrong that's not what I'm trying to say I'm just saying that for it's obvious that you're getting a better quality pencil when you pick these up as compared to picking up the shuttle art pencils um, once again, because I don't own the Hero pencils, and I know those are really popular right now, I can't compare the two. Um, but again, that's comparing wax pencils to oil pencils, which I think isn't really fair in a lot of aspects anyway. 
So there you have it guys. That's all of my thoughts on the Black Widow colored pencils and the Scorpion colored pencils which are part of the Black Widow line manufactured by the company called Medi Health One. Would I recommend them to you? Um, if you came to me and said, Hi Erin, I'm looking at these pencils and I'm wondering if I should spend my money on them. What do you think? Well, what I would advise to start with is I would get one of the sets and not both to start because you may not like them. And then if you don't like them, then you're going to have two sets of pencils that you bought that you don't really like. So, you know, like everything else, start small. Um, don't go out and buy everything you can find right off the bat because you may find out that you don't even like it. I would recommend starting out with the Black Widow, the original Black Widow, because they are the ones that have the white that you can use to blend, um, and the almost in the black. Um, now the Scorpions aren't going to come with those colors, so and I, I do kind of feel that those are necessary sometimes. So you may want to start with the Black Widows rather than the Scorpions just for that reason. And you're going to get plenty of colors just in the Black Widow line anyway. Um, once again, all the colors that you see here that have just the numbers, these are all going to be um, in the Black Widow set. So, because I've been working so very closely with Albert and the team at Medi Health One, um, and because I, and I did tell him guys, I do want, I do want to be very, very transparent here. I didn't pay for my pencils. Albert sent them to me um, to review. I did let him know before he sent them to me that I would be reviewing them fairly and there would be zero bias. If I found a fault, I would be telling you guys about the fault. And I think I've done a pretty good job of um, giving you guys both the pros and the cons of the pencils fairly. Um, in return for taking the time to review these pencils and getting them out there for you guys to see so that you guys can decide whether or not this is something that you are interested in investing your money in, Albert has decided that he would like to allow me to do a pretty nice giveaway. So, what we're going to be giving away is six sets of the original Black Widow colored pencils, and there are 24 pencils in that set. We're going to do the Black Widow pencils, number one, because they are the starter set. They are the flagship pencil. They come with the basic colors that you're going to need to get started. So six lucky people are going to win a 24 set of the Black Widow colored pencils. And here's how it's going to work. In order to enter, you must either live in a country where you have your own Amazon store, or you must be willing to pay the shipping costs associated with getting the pencils to you from either Amazon UK or Amazon US or another country where you have an Amazon. The way this is going to work is if you want to be entered in the drawing, all you have to do is leave a comment down, down below in the comments section and let us know that you want to win the pencils. Um, you will also need to be a member of my Facebook group just so I can track down the winners. If you're not a member of the Simple Art for Adults Facebook group, it's really easy to become a member. Just head on over to Facebook, um, type in Simple Art for Adults in the search bar, and don't look for the community, look for the group. There's a, or the page. There's a page and there's a group. Um, you're going to want to join the group. Uh, the page, I need to actually get rid of that because I don't use it anymore since I started the group. Um, but you will need to answer three questions in order for you to be accepted into our group. And then these are just to make sure, of course, that we aren't having, we don't have bots in the group and that everybody is willing to abide by copyright laws so we're not sharing anything illegally with the group and things of that nature. So just head on over there, click the join button, answer the quick three questions, um, and we can, and then uh, when you're finished watching the video, of course, leave your comment below. Um, what I'm going to do is one week from today, so I'm going to give you guys one week to do this. So on December the 15th, um, I am going to come back, um, probably in the early evening. I'm going to say like six o'clock in the evening. I, I, I'm not going to put a definite time guys. So just make sure that you get your entry in as quickly as you possibly can. Um, so early evening, about six o'clock central time on December the 15th, I'm going to come in and I'm going to use a random program that I have that will choose a commenter at random to be the winner. And we're going to choose six people this way. So if your name comes up um, and you are not part of the Facebook group, I will unfortunately have to skip over you and go to someone else. And this is just because the way the pencils are going to be awarded is through a code that you can redeem um, on Amazon to get your free pencils. 
um, in order for Albert to send that to you because Albert will be sending it to you directly. Um, so in order for you to get that code, you will need to be able to provide us with an email address um, and you can private message us on Facebook. I um, mean, we do want to make sure that we are serving our community as well. I um, mean, I understand that I have a lot of YouTube subscribers that aren't part of the Facebook group. Um, so, you know, 100%, make sure that you come and join us. You don't have to be active, guys. We don't ask, you don't have to post everything. Um, you, don't have, you don't have to post anything, as a matter of fact. But it is a fun little group. We have all kinds of cool conversations. Um, and I'm sure you'll really enjoy yourself over there. So that's all I have for you. Oh, one more thing in case I didn't bring it up. Um, in the event that you live in a country where you don't have your own Amazon store, okay? So let's say that you live, I, I can't think of an example right now, but if you don't have an Amazon uh, dedicated to your company, you can still win. What will happen is, is that you'll be able to come to the U.S. Amazon or the U.K. Amazon, one or the other, and order your pencils using the code, and it will work but you will be responsible for paying the shipping costs for getting the pencils from whatever country you order them to you. And that's the only difference. Um, unfortunately, we can't cover the shipping cost. Um, Albert's generosity is tremendous and I have thanked him numerous times for this giveaway. Um, unfortunately, we cannot, the shipping costs can get quite expensive. Um, and if I promised to do that for everybody, then I would be broke. And that's just, <laughs> that's just the truth. So if you win and you are not in a country that has your own Amazon, um, you will need to pay for the shipping costs associated with getting those pencils to you. Um, so if that's not the case, if you don't want to be entered uh, for whatever reason, but you do want to comment on the video, just type something like don't enter me in the contest, but, or something to, something to that effect. That way I'll know to skip you in the event that it does land on you. Alright guys, that is really all I have today um, as far as reviewing the Black Widow and the Scorpion pencils goes. I hope you really enjoyed this review and I hope that if you've been on the fence about buying them that this little review has helped you make up your mind about what you want to do. Um, if you have any questions about these pencils that I didn't address in the video, please stick them in the comments below or if you're in the Facebook group, um, feel free to send me a private message or just ask in the group um, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Now, while I've been sitting here talking your faces off, I've colored this pretty blue background behind the unicorn and it has just turned out lovely. Um, I'm very, very pleased with those results. And as you can see, the colors are nice and vibrant and I that was all just light layers. That was it. I haven't even burnished it yet. All right, guys, if you like this video, please go down below and give it a big thumbs up, especially if you know people who are interested in winning colored pencils, um, because, you know, get them over here, share this with them so they can come and leave a comment and see if this is something they're interested in. If you haven't subscribed already, please be sure to do so. Once you've subscribed, you'll see a little bell notification button. Go ahead and click that button and you'll get a notification every time I upload something new. Thank you so much for tuning in with me today, guys. I do appreciate every single time you take time out of your day to come and watch my videos. And thank you again. Enjoy the rest of your day.